Mark, yeah. my friend, thank you so very much for me for for chatting with me on such very short notice. I, uh, you know, happy to do it. How are you? I'm super fantastic, man. I'm very, very good. It's uh, it's been an absolutely amazing journey um, to uh, just been taking in what's been happening. Yeah. Um, and again, to to come across your work and what you've done with uh, with just building your theories and everything and. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just in a place of amazement because I truly like I've been walking with with the Lord since I was a child, you know, raised Catholic and not really to even hear talk about religion, but just scripture, right? Sure. What's written in the Bible sure. um, and honoring that. And um, yeah, just the understanding of of Jesus and, you know, how he, he did his thing. And then, you know, further leaning into that with the discoveries that I'm sitting in right now. My Yeah floating head if you will yeah it's a uh it's a flat earth book the the late rob skiba who i'm sure i'll be mentioning many times in the future uh you know he was one of the first people to get into this and wrote the uh created the, the amazing website testingtheglobe.com and he was one of the first people that called me up in in 2015 after we had talked a couple times and, and he said yeah it's a flat earth book he goes he goes i had no idea he goes there's only one verse that even hints at it and that's Isaiah 40, 22, he who sitteth upon the circle of the earth. And he goes, but that's not, that doesn't do anything with the Hebrew translation. He goes, it doesn't work. He goes, uh, circle is not ball. It's not sphere. It's not globe. It's just a circle, like a dinner plate. And he, and then we, we started going into it more and more. And yeah, it is, it, I, I, all the doubt that I had when I first started doing this in 2015, quickly evaporated before christmas even even happened that, that wow. year. uh mostly again mostly unsolicited where people were just calling me up from all walks of life uh pilots and engineers and air traffic controllers and anybody that had to it was tied to transportation or, or doing stuff long distance right they they all said the same thing again completely unsolicited i had no idea who these people were they going yeah man it's not that crazy here's yeah. why and yeah. Yeah, i mean even the the <laughs> the couple of the documentaries that came out recently um uh that I put on my channel again subject matter experts that's what really built it for us it wasn't just the celebrities or anything like that the celebrities have kind of become cannon fodder because they're easy to pick on it's like oh how could you you know how can you be so dumb to say that you're you know you're in the public eye but right. the subject matter experts those are the ones that cemented everything for us yeah the interesting thing for me was um Again, the, my initial approach to this was we're a plateau floating through space. Mm -hmm. And then I discounted the idea and realizing that if we were to hit, be hit by an asteroid, it would totally throw everything off off kilter, right? So I'm, mm -hmm. I was looking at this from every single grasping of straws and everything else. Yeah. And then I kind of just, with this discovery of Noah's Ark by Mr. Ron Wyatt in the late 90s, yeah. All of a sudden, it brought me back to the first page of the Bible, right. literally, where it's talked about that the Lord created the day, what 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 He created each day. Yeah, speaking specifically about the firmament. Yeah, um, I think maybe the firmament was like maybe day three or four. I don't even re recall exactly. It doesn't but... matter. It was still chapter one. It's still exactly yeah. exactly, and it's on the first page. Right. So I, I kind of I wonder about those things with how we can get so deep into the Bible when we haven't even got past understanding the first page and realizing that this arc that we're looking at yeah. was literally preserved, encapsulated by volcan by a nearby volcano, yeah. fossilized, was was literally fossilized and preserved for us to literally discover and look upon and find and then all of a sudden realize we can trace back and start connecting all these dots. Sure. And then I came across, I just went crazy with flat earth and that's how I, I, I came on onto your work. Cool. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, you know, my story probably, I mean, I didn't please think go away. Feel free. I, 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 here's the thing. And I want to, pre, I guess, preface our conversation or preface your conversation and saying, yeah, I realized when I discovered your work, how on point you were. And then I quickly went hands off because I wanted to just have an absolutely organic chat with you. So feel free, like um, whatever you want to talk about. Well, I mean, I was one of those, I mean, people, people think, oh, he was always a conspiracy guy. And oh, it was so easy for, for Mark to transition to this. 
I was like, no, 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 no. I was the worst guy ever to bring into Flat Earth because of one, I came from the tech world. I mean, yeah, I was, I was, you know, born again, evangelical Christian home and, and, uh, you know, church wasn't just a Sunday thing, you did all that stuff. But when I left the island, my very rural island, all of a sudden the world was opened up and it was like a playground for me. It's like, what? <laughs> it's like religion. Get out of here. I got stuff to do. And I was in the tech world doing my thing for so long, you know, the tech world and the science fiction world doesn't exactly line up with anything else. Yeah. And but on top of that, I was a huge fan of the globe icon. I collected, I'm, I, I have run into no one that did what I did. I collected antique globes, not making this up because I was in, I'm old enough to when eBay was new and I, I was like looking for collectibles. Hold on. What? what? Wait, I wanted to, to respectfully ask you this. Yeah. What, what, are you an 80s baby? 70s baby? 60s. 60s. Okay. Oh, yeah. 79. So I, I. Oh, you're yeah, you're you're not so bad. You're you're about the same age as Karen, my my co-host. Uh, to where your music, the the music you got into was in the '90s. Mine mine was in the '80s. So I was you know the new wave in the '90s was getting a little edgier and, and stuff like that. Um, but, but we can still talk talk about the the prism. The prism. The prism. Refracted light. Oh, the yeah. album cover. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, anybody, every any any music lover can still talk about that. Um, but anyway, I got into, uh, you know, I, I was into globes and I, I mean, I had world maps. It was the running joke with me that if I ever suffered a, a blow to the head and I woke up in my house, at least I would know where I was because mm -hmm. I had maps everywhere. I was a huge fan of world maps, the Mercator maps, one satellite imagery. I mean, I plastered just everywhere. And then... So when I got into this, honestly, it was, it was weird. I mean, I, not only what did I, did all the conditioning from school sink in, but I was conditioning myself <laughs> voluntarily without even knowing it. And then right. to when, when I clicked on my very first flat earth video in 2014, summer of 2014, I literally was embarrassed. I was flushed. I mean, I, I caught myself and it was really weird because I come from the tech world. I never got married or had kids. So I'm sitting alone in a room with the drapes pulled and something right. on the computer is embarrassing me right since when right <laughs> ever everybody knows there's some stuff out there on the internet you shouldn't be clicking on right but this shouldn't have been one of them right and it's like it's like wait why why am i physically getting flushed at this mm. slowly but surely i started realizing that it was because of all the conditioning in in my life I, what, kind of like i told people i go the reason why people react so strongly to flat earth is that they are taught about it subconsciously since they were six years old you know, the globe is in the classroom since you're six years old. And you're thinking, well, what, what would that do? It's like, well, think about this. Think about if you told somebody when they were like 30 that they were adopted <laughs> and they had no clue, right? And yeah. because their first response would be like, get out of here. That's BS. No way. Right. But the second, the second they start to believe it, even a second, they have, you know, because ripples go back in time. And they start exactly. reevaluating every conversation and every weird thing that happened to them since they were yeah. six years old. It's like, right. wait a minute, who are my real parents? And then it just is shock to the system. Right. So. Well, yeah. cognitive dissonance, right? That's the, uh, you know, the, the, the term for it. And that's yeah. like, if usual suspects, Kaiser Soze starts walking normally at the end and you're like, wait, what? <laughs> so you, you, yeah, exactly. That great example. I mean, people. Denial, the, the five stages of acceptance Whoa. has never changed. And the first one, denial, is, again, the line from the Matrix. Denial is the first you know, and most predictable response yep. that, that human beings have for anything that's really life-changing that's out there. And I don't blame them. I, I, I was that way, too, right. to where when I finally – but I, I was stubborn. I, and, and I was trying to figure out how I – was, I was trying to argue for the globe and argue it you know, in, my, in my head – over and over and then i that one weird night in 2015 when i woke up and i said you know what i'm now going the other way because it's right. easier it's easier to to prove things on the flat side and i'll sell right. this once and for all because i i like i'm a creative problem solver mm -hmm. always have been so if i argue on that side it'll just be easy someone then I'll, I'll, I'll do the smart thing right i'll make a series of videos i'll put it online with all my contact information that's a great thing to do be transparent 
Yeah. <laughs> and put all when my, you walk with the my truth, phone number, my real name, where buddy, I live. When you walk with the truth, no weapon form against you shall harm you. Uh, apparently that was the case. Because I yeah. honestly thought that some academic was, was going to call me up. And that was when I answered the phone. Uh, would call me up and say, "Okay, here's where you screwed up. You forgot to carry yeah. the two. You can get, yeah. you, know, you can blow, you can take down your YouTube channel." E equals MC what? Yeah, yeah. People, no people, but that's just it. The academics never called me. Instead, it was all these other people were contacted. Started, and and it's and, it's and and one of the things you've outlined is professionals started attesting, yeah. right? And again, I've mentioned this to a couple of people. Professionals are the people that can sign passports, right? right. They take an oath. They put their hand on the Bible, right? right. They can't right. lie. <laughs> Just you ask a pilot straight up. You fly yeah. 16,000 feet and the world looks what? And he says flat. And you're like, okay, thanks. Appreciate yeah. it. And yeah, then you yeah, get yeah. Tyson back or whatever his face trying to explain how Tyson, far yeah. you are. And uh, no, thanks. And, and there were also people that were, uh, weren't even calling me. They were, they were making things. Like a lot of people don't know that, of course, the America does not have spy planes spies don't even exist in our country it's just one of those things right right so one of our not spy plane pilots uh is tour was touring around the country doing a book tour and as right. you know as sr-71 blackbird pilot which is now uh, officially retired but unofficially why wouldn't we keep using it along with the u2 it's a great plane but right. whatever it was. anyway he was he was going through a tour and saying stuff like when he was in arizona like around phoenix he could see the coast of california and he was only at less than 80,000 feet. But yeah. then he said, oh, yeah. And if I look to my right, I could actually see the mountains all the way up to Canada. <laughs> and you're like, what? And of course, your brain, you're like, what, what? And of course, he couldn't see the forest for the trees. Yeah. Meaning he was like, oh, yeah, look Great how point. far I can see. But if someone came to him, it's like, yeah, you know, you shouldn't be able to see that far. He'd be like, the what now? <laughs> what are you talking about and, and you know the curvature formula i have I, I have seen it so many times it's such a simple formula again not ours you know yeah, eight, inch, eight, eight inches per mile, per mile when, I, yeah. when i say eight, eight inches per mile and then and they look and they're going yeah totally with you right there with you i go squared and then they go yeah eighth grade i have no idea what happened in eighth yeah. grade trig but, is but, not something a lot of people did well no, no. And so they, they don't, they don't get it because it's, and I still have people quoting. It's like, Oh, it's eight inches per mile. I go, no, that's stairs. That's yeah. a slope. You yeah. know, it's gotta, it's gotta yeah. round off. It's gonna curve off. So, okay. Let, let's talk about that for a quick second. Yeah. The aspect or the idea of this, we're on a globe and I, I enjoy destructing a lot of their ideas as well. Sure. The whole idea that 23.4 degrees tilt off 90 which is magnificently 66.6 .6 degrees mm -hmm. that's 90 minus 23.4 not 100 right. minus 23.4 because there's right. 90 degrees in segments of the circle okay yeah. um the idea of centrifugal force versus gravity and all these things yeah. the first question i have is wouldn't you spin faster at the top of this globe and slower at the belly so your actual weight would actually be different no, well okay if it's a globe right if it's a globe i don't even yeah. like saying the word but if it's a globe then you're spinning supposedly spinning a thousand miles yeah. an hour at the equator whatever but you're spinning at zero miles an hour at the north and south pole right uh, it's no no different than a merry-go-round right merry-go-round you can stand stand in the center everyone knows as a kid you can right. just turn around in a circle but if you're on the edge oh you're going somewhere you know you you're, you might even be able to flung off the weird thing about that is the water that's the part that everybody misses so saturn's rings for example right if you believe in saturn's rings like these belt of rocks that are spinning around the center not spinning at the top of the bottom it's only spinning at the center so that's not even liquid supposedly right if you believe in saturn what happens mm. with water well everybody knows that water is extremely reactive to motion i mean you're holding a cup you make a sharp left hand turn you better be ready How, everyone every single person has spilled a beverage in their car but, you know to learn the lesson it's like oh wow if i make a sharp turn you know or get you know there's a reason why cup holders you know the, the top the the coffee lids are sold everywhere no one goes anywhere without a coffee lid you can't right so if that's the case then why isn't there this massive bulge of water? Why is there any dry land at all at the equator? The water should 
squeeze in from both sides and there should be a big band a big spare tire of water around the equator and not only that there should be bald spots on the north and south big yeah. ones yeah it should be and it's like no 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 it's absolutely uniform it's like there's not even a little bulge i mean you'd think that over the years it'd be like what well, shouldn't there even be you know, you know forget about 500 feet or a thousand feet even a hundred feet bulge you know shouldn't there be a, coast, a coastline issue yeah. and okay they won't they won't they won't address it uh yeah they, they, and, and yeah. I, I i i don't want to waste a lot of time on that either because oh, no, no. again it's just something that i i wanted to it's something I, I came across yesterday quite honestly and wanted to kind of explore with you and and just throw it out for consumption oh, yeah. now the next thing being the idea of us being a reflection in the from, moon from the moon yeah the continent layout where like are you it. on that i like it it's it's look, I, I wake up with flat earth every day so i i can't i don't have a leg to stand on when it comes to shooting down ideas the last big idea that i wanted to shoot down was the temperature gun of the moon you know where the the moonlight is actually cold compared to oh the, yeah no the the sunlight but i was like when i was on air when that was brought up to me the first time and i laughed at him yeah. like that's, that's you know my co was like that's the dumbest thing i ever heard i'm going and then of course within a month or two later i got rob skeeb outside pointing and clicking on things going dude it's absolutely real it's like so what okay yeah. so this is where i want to throw the ball around with you Taking the idea of the firmament yeah. and unpacking the fact that it's stated in scripture that the sun and the moon were both placed in the firmament. Right. Do you, and again, I'm just going to ask really ignorant questions just so we can establish, no, establish no a good thing. foundation. No such okay? thing. But the moon and the sun are opposites. They're always on opposite sides of the spectrum right they don't ever like catch up to one another well unless we're do dealing... no actually they, they do they do okay eventually it takes it takes a number of days but eventually it does the eclipse you know you'll, right. you'll get it both sides you get lunar and solar eclipses but it does right. take a while right yeah so the question that i started meandering and thinking about was if the moon right is a reflection of the firmament right or no sorry the or or the very least the reflection map. no way yeah. what i want to say is the flat plateau is right. a reflection in the moon okay right okay known and unknown the dark sections of the moon are land the light sections are water mm -hmm. right and again it's a reflection so we have to flip it right sure. Sure. we always see the same image facing back at us right 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 the exact same image isn't it yes it's, it, it, it never it changes is one, it is one of the anomalies one of those weird things that science just says it's just a weird coincidence yeah. that the moon for whatever reason is locked in to rotation yeah. to where even doesn't even go a quarter degree out of sync ever it I just, mean, you know, all hundreds it does of years go open, by. And that's my thing. It's almost like a hand is literally polishing it, right? Opening it and closing it. Does kind that make of. sense? Sure. Right? When we go with, with the waxing and the waning of the moon, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. My question to you, my friend, mm -hmm. what if we are dealing with two items, being the sun and the moon, that are mm -hmm. actually reflected images of one main item? possibly that's pretty out of I the can't box see your face <laughs> what do you mean oh, freaking... what happened lost you. what in the world he ghosted on that you. is maybe so I'm, weird because i am not wearing green maybe i'm speaking uh, the, hang on maybe let I'm me speaking the truth. let me okay. let me kill the video and, and put it back in no no don't <laughs> one second okay there, there you go. go yeah if that ever happens let me know that is weird yeah, i've no never worries. seen that happen um as, yeah as we're talking about weird reflections right uh your face just goes black yeah that's so weird um it's possible i mean we do uh, i'll be perfectly blunt with you there's a lot about the sky we do not know we we just don't know exactly how the optics work uh people have asked me like what's the weakest 
arguments in the flat earth model. What's the biggest thing science can throw at you? And most of the time I say it, I'm really surprised. I don't, I mean, out of all the things I've done, it's hardly ever brought up. And that is the 24 hour Antarctic sun, for example, which is if the, if, you know, if the sun is traveling on a, like a needle on a record player, you can't have a 24 hour sun in Antarctica. I know there's some people who say, well, there isn't 24 hour Antarctic sun. And, you know, there's weird missing clips of video, but there's other people I have talked to, personal people that I have no doubt to, to trust them saying hey, there is Antarctic sun, but I don't really care because yeah. the optics that whatever's happening up there, we don't, we don't know. I mean, like, for example, the firmament height, we approach, say approximately say 3000 miles. I'm not going to convert it to kilometers or anything. Uh, and then the sun and the moon are less than 50 miles wide are they 3d or 2d in nature are they just projections on the ceiling we don't know i mean i've had some people say is it possible that they are generated like no different than if you take a magnifying glass to sunlight and you project a beam over there that beam that point of light is as, as bright as the sun in some cases and it's tough, and, tough and to look at so here's 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 the thing with that yeah and i love that example because the sorry about my phone. That's all right. It's all right. Social media. It's okay. What if the, the 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 sun is simply an igniter of environmental gases? Could be. Right. And and for an example, you go to the beach, you get a tan, the sun ignites, creates the light ray, if you will. Sure. And you're filtered or you're you're hammered with those effects um that is the 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 thing that got me cranking on the idea of like polaris the location above the antarctic because that spot never changes right right like right. that spot everything turns around that right. and the idea again of of the uh the firmament now where are you in terms of like, if that were to, well, I guess I can't really ask you that question because what? Well, if that plateau in the moon right. was entirely as such, right. there's a hell of a lot of land that hasn't been discovered yet, which oh, will make a lot possible. of sense with yeah. respects to the treaties and all those things that have been signed about places we can't go and oh, yeah. all those warships and that. Why and why wouldn't you? I mean, with a especially with a civilization like ours, and this goes all the way back to the science fiction movies of the fifties. You know, uh, the, the original, the day the Earth stood still. If people forget the plot. The plot was is that we were too dangerous to be let out of our cage. And uh, they're like, "Yeah, you're not exploring. This is this is your extent of your exploration. You're not going any further. You guys are far too uh, savage. You know, you're, right. you're into colonization. So, right. is it possible that there are?" tons and tons more continents out there yeah i have, I have no doubt right. i believe no doubt i mean do i believe everything in the iron republic story eh, maybe but i mean i think it's perfectly feasible sure why not that there's other continents out there that the only question is is there are there other domes on top of them and can they travel freely between worlds there seems to be rules here there's rules and protocols which we are not subject to but other groups are the old okay. argument, which is, well, why isn't a big golden spaceship landed in the middle of Indiana and started coming out and taking signing autographs and taking selfies? Right. And it's like, well, the prime directive, which we came up with on our own, seems to make sense, which is if you have the potential of influencing society just from showing up on Main Street one day would be so huge that you would change the course potentially of history. Yes. Yeah. So there are rules. You can, oh yeah, you can pick up some people in a boat or, you know, some camping people. You can do that every once in a while, but don't get right. caught on camera. You know what I mean? <laughs> don't, right. don't get killed, which is weird because the early, there are stories going back to the mid 1800s about airships, huge sightings of, of previous civilization ships flying around. But mm -hmm. as camera technology evolved, I've got a theory behind that where that I think that as camera technology got better, the farther away they had to go. And the, and the less they could interact. It's like, it's one thing. You want to show up in the middle of the 1800s when there's no cameras? Fine. You can yeah. do some of those things. I mean, the, the biggest, the, the most amazing sighting ever interaction was the um, 1561 Nuremberg event. Look that up if you get a chance. We'll do. 
absolutely mind-boggling. Perfectly clear day. Three different factions spent better part of an hour above the city just doing all sorts of weird stuff. But the the you know they came out with sketch artists. But imagine if you had photographers there. Well, that would mm. that's it because everyone is really big into. And I don't want to drag this out into what they what they can see for themselves, what they right. can find out for themselves. Which is why, by the way, the Flyers community has done as well as it has. Right. Because even though nobody owns their own Jetsons space car, everyone you know has found out their own. I like I didn't never suggested run down to the beach with a camera and start shooting long distance. I had no idea. And then people start calling me up. It's like, look what I see. You know, I'm getting all these photographs sent to me. I'm going, what the hell are those? And it's like, well, water lays perfectly level. I go, oh, yep. hey. That's the good. canals that were laid dead yeah. straight. Yeah. 100 miles, I think they run for. It's like, look at this lighthouse. Look at this boat. Look at this stuff. Yeah. And, and uh, that's when I came up with the idea, which was, yeah, the thing that changed was HD technology. Right. Cameras, even 25 years ago, wouldn't have been able to help you. But the camera now that you can buy off the shelf for a couple hundred bucks, you can you can show an awful lot of stuff. You can beat down mainstream media. I mean, um, National Geographic when we were sh doing photographs at, at you know movies at ten miles, nine miles across right. a California salt lake, and they would not use it in their uh, their program because they realized that the damning evidence it was. Right. And so they just scrapped that whole segment. It's like, yep, never happened. It's like, what are you yeah. talking about? We live streamed. It. So, Click. Yeah. Okay, so. Jesus. Yes. Are you familiar with the story? Which? Right? In terms of him passing. Uh, growing, yeah, growing up born again, I, I am somewhat aware of. of okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the reason I bring up Jesus right now is yeah. getting down to the looking at, again, scripture, Noah's Ark, right? right. The edification of this thing in Genesis. The year 2022, right. seven years removed from the year 2029, Okay, there's the idea that we're 2,000 years past Jesus's death. Hmm. And like literally to the number, right? And this is why I, I, I again, I'm not talking about religion. I'm right. really just here to kind of put some additional things on the sure. board because of where we are 2022 is marked according to the uh torah i believe um hebrew as a shemitah year okay i find it interesting that you mentioned 2015 because that was a shemitah year as well right so it's know. just literally seven years seven years seven years is all of them cascaded out 1945 world war ii was a shemitah year as well so this has been traced back, back, back all the way through. So my big, I guess, talk at this point, or 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 um, the thing that I want to exemplify, or not exemplify, no, just bring to the table for discussion is everybody's waking up and realizing certain things. Right. And I'm really wondering if they're trying to, or if they've successfully Mandela affected the ground out from beneath us. Wow, some big thinking there. Uh, and yes, possible. I, when it comes to the Mandela effect, and I like to joke, anytime anyone, I, I'm not going to use the joke on you. Anytime somebody says that, I go, you mean the Mandelta effect? Right. Yeah. <laughs> the Mandela Bernstein effect. Bernstein or Bernstein? Yeah. I don't even yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> the, um, the, when it comes to stuff like that or parallel universes or alternate timelines, do I think it's possible? Yeah, of course. We have delved into science fiction theory. In fact, we... It's got a 10-minute warning, so... Oh, 10-minute warning on the... Oh, then it cuts out? Yeah, on the Zoom chat. Oh, okay. So, no stress. I All lost right. your face again, though. Damn it. What the hell? So, I, you know what? It's probably because I leaned back. It's weird because this green screen oh, should good, be dude. fine, although I am using slightly different lighting. It's kind of trippy, though, because it's, it's just this hat. <laughs> I'm uh, in the no, picture. No, do it's I, like do I think anyway. it's possible? Yeah, you bet. Um, do I think that they're doing it to try to stop us and eh, maybe slow us down? But I don't think they can stop it. There's a there's a theory out there uh, in different metaphysical circles that all that that one of the things they've done is when they look forward in the future that some of the the black hats out there uh, have the ability to look in the future and all of them seem to be coalescing into one. 
and there's eventually there's no way out of it. There's some, they can stall it for a little bit and yeah. mess with the flow chart, but eventually it's going to be one timeline, one ending, one timeline. Yep. And so the, yeah, and that's, yeah, that's, that's what I believe to be the Jubilee, the thousand years of uh, the thousand years of peace, because we're literally at the end of the age of the church, right? Jesus spent the last, or, yeah, Jesus spent the last 2000 years saving the Gentiles, yeah. right? Which is us, the common folk, right? Yeah. And then the, the idea is that the Antichrist shows up um, in the, that, that's that this, in Daniel's 70th week, that's what's prophesied. Ah. And then we spend all, they, they have the battle of Armageddon at the end of the, the thousand years. And that's the 7,000 years, ah. right? The thing that, that I'm, I'm trying to conceptualize is dinosaurs never happened. Okay. Right. The moon is basically a plane. It's not a 3d object. Sure. Jury's still out on the sun. Right. So I'm thinking, do aliens really exist? Do like, where did all this other stuff come from? Because uh, well, if we're going to go, go by Papa's word, Papa told us this place was, was built 6,000 years ago. Sure. However, right. that means, uh, I, I, I'll, I'll try to condense this down. Yeah. That means this place was built 6,000 years ago, give or take. That day, he never said that there weren't any other places like this so when it comes to and there's no lying involved in fact i don't think there's any deception just that this place was built six thousand years ago could there be other buildings out there sure why would this have to be a one-off right so do i when people say you know do you think that aliens are, are do i think there's stuff flying around there yes i i own night vision binoculars and you can go up and look anytime you want and the sky is crawling with stuff Right. Are they us? No. I did, despite what the U.S. U.S. Air Force would love to tell you, they are not us. Taking credit for other people's work, that's fine. Um, however, are they from Mars and Jupiter and Venus? No. Don't have to be. Why would they be? Do I think they're older versions of us or versions of us that are in different places outside of here? Sure. Why? Why wouldn't you? That again, the prime directive. I think that when you reach a certain level of technology, you get access to certain things, but there are rules you have to follow. And one is, you know, probably from God, it's like, don't mess with particular groups. This, this group is off limits. If you yeah. land and screw anything up, there will be hell to pay, so to speak. I'm going to deal with you. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, you'll have to answer to me. Again, look up the 1561 Nuremberg event. There was some weird stuff that was happening there. Right. Um, so no, I, I think they're just older versions of us that do. And come on. And when it comes to civilizations, uh, do I think the numbers were somewhat fudged? Possibly. I mean, uh, you know, the, there are older versions of civilization. Now, could they be just remnants, you know, old remnants for, for decoration? I mean, there are sunken cities off of Japan and sunken cities off of India and Bimini Road and the Bosnian pyramids and the real pyramids and stuff like and Puma Punku and so on and so on the remnants of stuff that used to be around were they previous civilizations that predate what we were doing or are they just relics of what could have been previous civilizations added for mystery and flavor you know what i mean it was that way we can it's something that we can we can look at and it's like wow maybe there was a previous civilization or they could have been just been ruins that were created for the heck of it sort of like right. decorating the moon right, right? The, the moon doesn't have to be decorated with craters and all that stuff, even, even though the craters make no sense from a physics standpoint, that they all came in at 90 degree angles, but that's a whole other thing for another time. Yeah. Lots of things around for inspiration, si signs and wonders. Uh, you know, the, technically, when we build our crude simulations, you got to remember that the early ones that we build, I come from the video game industry, there was no sun and the moon in the sky. We had to add that later. However, let there be light oh yeah the early simulator the early stuff we built the sky was just lit where they, was it lit by it's not lit by anything we just lit the sky the sun and the moon we just added for decoration later for and and in this case you know it's something like this the sun and the moon you know the the sun was a wonderful inspirational tool and the moon was a giant nightlight that also inspired some people the ones that weren't <laughs> sleeping anyway that's funny. I lost your face again, but we're at uh, four minutes. All right. Um, Mark, thank you so very much for the chat today. Um, I, I truly appreciate it.
uh, just for being here. Um, again, I just got my little movement going on on YouTube, and then having somebody like yourself uh, come through and just to throw the ball around and, and oh, chat yeah. about happy, these ideas. Happy to do it. Really appreciate it. Um, what I, I mean, I would love to set up another interview with you if possible, sure. um, and maybe take like you know one aspect of our again organic conversation because today was literally just a hey, you know, how's it going? Nice to see you, yeah. uh, friendly neighbor kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I would love to um, to explore further with you, and we'll chat via email and figure something out. Yeah, no, happy happy to do it. It seemed like a really nice guy. And again, the first time I've ever, are you wearing a green shirt? A green yeah, shirt? yeah, I'm just wearing a green sweater. Um, did, you, did you do that but, deliberately to see what would happen? Or do you knew? Oh, no, I, I do this all the time. So I usually do uh, YouTube shares. I'll have videos running and stuff. I'll just be down in the corner. I'm kind of just like a fly on the wall. Um, so I, like somebody has, when, when they're watching your stuff, they have somebody to connect to, but not this, taking That is a great little tutorial for people, you know, because they tell newscasters is the rule of newscasting. Never wear, if it's a blue screen, don't wear blue. And if it's a green screen, don't wear green because right. you will become transparent. Disappear. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. right. Appreciate you so very much, man. Have an amazing evening again. Thank you for the chat. And I look forward to setting up another one with you. All right. Thanks, man. Peace, man. Take care. See ya.